has to assume that there will be more terrorist attacks in the future. It's a notable accomplishment that the strategy's main goal, preventing future 9-11 scale attacks on the United States, has been fulfilled for over seven years. That's not a small thing. Think of where our country would be if we had suffered a series of 9-11 type attacks. In light of the current financial crisis, it's worth recalling that the stock market lost around $1.5 trillion of value in the days after 9-11, just to put things in perspective. I've intended my book to demonstrate how a controversial topic can be debated sharply and vigorously without the kind of personal and reckless attacks that are common in political discussions now. I, I devote a lot of space in the book to interagency differences and quarrels. I present the positions that I advocated and those that I opposed. And when I set out rival views, I did so with the thought that those who held them should be able to say that their views were presented fairly and in context. Too many government, former government officials write books that declare that their rivals were all foolish or lazy or dishonest. And such books, I think, do no good for the country and are worthless as history. I'd like to conclude by quoting a short passage from the conclusion of the book. Are we content that the national security debate in America is as serious and civil as it should be? Is it worthy of the stakes in this war, worthy of the reason we are fighting, to preserve the free and open nature of our society, and worthy of the men and women in our armed forces who are bearing the brunt of this fight? Our military forces are performing skillfully and courageously. Their sacrifices are securing our lives and liberty. We owe them gratitude, and we honor them when we aspire to fulfill our duties as, as citizens at home as nobly as they fulfill their duties as warriors abroad. Thank you. And I'll be happy to take your comments or questions. Please. All right. Um, you mentioned earlier um, that Iraq had actually used um, weapons of mass destruction. Um, I was probably pretty young when that was going on. Um, could you specify um, yes. what weapons of mass destruction they actually used? Yeah, they. They use, in, in, at the tail end of the Iran-Iraq war, which Saddam Hussein had started uh, about a year after he came into power, uh, approximately uh, s s late summer 1980. Uh, at the end of the Iran-Iraq war in the, in, in the late 80s, it was an eight-year war, killed about a million people, by the way, Saddam launched a set of attacks called the Anfal campaign against the Kurds in northern Iraq. And uh, in those attacks, he used chemical weapons. And there were horrific pictures that were aired all around the world of these Kurdish women in their very colorful native garb lying on the street with their dead babies. I mean, they are dead and their babies are dead right next to them. They were just struck down on the street by the, uh, the nerve gas uh, and other chemical weapons that Saddam used against them uh, in, in the late 80s. Then, in, in the Iran-Iraq war, also, Saddam used uh, nerve gas against the Iranians the Iranians then invited, invited the UN uh, to come in to inspect and, and uh, the, the, an, an, interna an international team was organized by the UN to come into Iran and, uh, and they issued a report confirming that Saddam had used um, nerve gas against uh, Iran in that fighting. Um, by the way, that was the first time in history that anybody had ever used nerve gas on the battlefield. I mean, in World War I, the, the, the chemical agents that were used were not, did, did not include nerve gas. And, uh, and then Saddam also made an attempt to use chemical weapons against the Shiites 
after the uh, Gulf War, but uh, the weapons that he used were duds. So he, he used them successfully twice and used them unsuccessfully once. Um, given the president's strategic goal of preventing a, a subsequent attack, why was that communicated? What's your opinion as to why that was communicated so miserably to the American people? Well, it's, it, it's a great source of frustration and sadness to me that the administration over and over again failed to, to formulate its, uh, uh, its positions in, in a way that I think would have been you know, most helpful to explain what it was doing to the public. Uh, I have quite a bit of a discussion of that in my book. I think that, that I mean, one of the things I point out in the book was that I was in the Reagan administration, and in the early 80s, there was a very big uh, ideological battle going on between the United States and the Soviet Union over the deployment of, uh, of intermediate range missiles in Europe. And the Soviets did propaganda brilliantly. And one of the things they did was they organized messages uh, in favor of their proposal at the time, which was called the nuclear freeze. Right? They organized messages so that no matter how you thought of yourself, if you thought of yourself primarily as a lawyer, there were lawyers groups for the nuclear freeze. If you thought of yourself mainly as an environmentalist, there were environmentalist groups for the nuclear freeze. There were women's groups for the nuclear freeze. There were Jewish groups. There were black groups. There were, and no matter how people organized themselves, there were groups that they made sure were, were armed with the particular arguments for their group. The administration went out and gave multi-leveled discussions so that for academic groups, there was much more detailed presentation. For the general public, there was stuff appropriate for the general public. That's the way the Soviets organized, and that's the way the Reagan administration countered them in response. And the Reagan administration had officials at multiple levels going out, talking to groups. They had highly detailed presentations for academic and journalistic experts. And, and you know, then the president would talk at a level of generality appropriate for the president. This administration, the Bush administration, did it completely differently. And it kind of shows what flows from having the wrong strategy on, on the, in this area. Administration officials tended to focus not on what should have you know, been the, the most effective way of persuading the largest number of people. Rather, they focused on what they called disciplining the message. So they had very few spokesmen. And they did not encourage people in the administration below the level of the cabinet to even go out and speak. And they didn't prepare much more detailed presentations for expert audiences versus the general public. And so what you had was the president would give his speeches at a certain level of generality. His main themes would be echoed by a handful of people, Condi Rice and, and Don Rumsfeld and, and uh, Secretary Powell and one or two others, uh, the vice president. And they were all speaking at pretty much the same level of generality. And the administration, I think, just completely fell down on the job of providing additional information, the deeper analysis, what was actually being done within the administration. And, uh, I mean, it's a real lesson for anybody who wants to study national security policy making about controversial issues in a democracy. I mean, th this administration did itself an enormous amount of harm by mishandling that, I believe. And anyway, there's a, there are many PhD dissertations that can be written on the subject. Um, I have a comment and a question. The comment has to do with... Um being an educator, I'm speaking as an educator here on campus, and I teach uh, political philosophy, political theory, and I just want to express to you how difficult it is um, teaching year after year uh, theories of justice and international right and obligations to contract and the progress we've made in international conventions such as the Geneva Conventions and um, international regimes which are uh, put in place and supported by signatory states to minimize conflict. And we put all of our effort into these uh, courses and try to encourage